Alright everyone, hope you're having a great one. So, it is fine, it has taken a little bit longer than I thought because of the weather, but it's done. I mean, look, it is done, it is clear. Oh, it is the Schlur wine. And for a change, the name is apt because this is alcoholic now, so we can call it Schlur wine. Oh yes. So, if you haven't seen the part one video of how I made this thing, I have no idea. Uh, I will stick the link at the top there so you can see it if you want to know how we did it. So we're done. I've got the bottles, the actual bottles they came out of because they, they, they just look so pretty and they're already labeled schlur because this is now wine that makes you schlur if you drink too much, which is good. So, just as a quick recap, we made Schlur wine, we took away the chemicals, we added a little bit of extra sugar, just to bump it up a little bit, and then we put it in here to ferment, using yeast and nutrients, because we need that. Now it does have sweetener in there, this particular sweetener is stevia, which is a natural source, and then they use alcohol refining and all sorts of chemicals to get the stevia out, so, yeah, sure, natural. So, not a great fan of stevia, it tastes like sweetener to me, but I can taste sweetener, so yeah, if you can't, then it probably doesn't matter. So it did knock out the hydrometer, so I am interested to see what this finished at. So I've gone ahead and sterilized everything, because I'm cool, using bleach and washing up liquid. Uh, in fact, I used even cheaper washing up liquid, because uh, I ran out. So these are sterile, this is all sterile. The siphon tube is sterile. The brewing peg is over there, which I'm going to have to boil because I forgot it. And the hydrometer has been sterilized. And I haven't done my glass because that would just be weird. Because we're going to try some. So let's pop the hydrometer in. And let's see what we have made. That likes the bob. So how does it smell? <laughs> That's interesting. So it has wine-like smells. It smells a bit like a rosé, but it also smells like a young wine. Yeah, it does. It has a slight of, has a blush like smell, but it also smells like it's freshly fermented, which I'm surprised at because uh, I have really low expectations of this. Seriously low. Haven't seen anyone try it, but yeah. We could have made something good. I'm as amazed as you. So, the hydrometer is in. It has stopped moving. And it is reading. If I can find the... There's the one mark. Come on. How is it? When you turn it, it always wants to go where... It, give it a sharp turn. Yeah, turn. It's still not turning. Ooh. So, we expected it not to ferment to dryness. And it hasn't, it's not down at 990. It is actually about one. Yeah, well, 1.002 ish, you know, because you've got the that thing with water. I can't even remember that now. So that is approximately, I don't know, what, 5.5%? Yeah, 5.5. We're going with that. That's that's not so bad. That means that. The sweetener did knock it out a bit by, well, what did I say, 6% I was expecting, and it's 5.5. So it is, yeah, it was about half a percent out from what I guessed, because no one tells you how much sweetener they add in there, only the sugar. I think they should start doing that. We should have a campaign, sweetener out, sugar in. <laughs> anyway, so this is 5.5%. We didn't make it stupidly strong because, well, it's it's a blush wine. Blush wines are normally not very strong. But still, that's kind of respectable for making a light, effervescing drink. So uh, I'm just going to pop that on there. I'm going to grab the brewing peg and uh, let's just go ahead and bottle it up. So the siphoning has been completed. And from our five litre batch, we have our original gallon and a cheeky glass. Now, they actually came out 
beautiful and crystal clear. Apart from when I pushed the siphon tube all the way to the bottom, because I wasn't paying attention, and it sucked up in bottle number five, a little bit of yeast. It happens, but bottle number six and the glass that I poured is, uh, is yeast free. It happens sometimes. I mean, if you're really that worried, you will do multiple rackings and all the rest of it, but we don't do that here. One and done. Works perfectly well. Worked for quite literally thousands of years, so yeah, go with it. So we have a choice now. These have not been degassed. Now I haven't degassed them because I'm going to be carbonating them. But if you want your wine to taste still, just like a still wine that you would buy in a shop, you would want to degas these. Now I degas in the bottle because uh, it's easy and I don't use preservatives, so it still has a little bit of CO2, but just give it a, a nice little shake like so if you want to degas them. And then you can release the pressure and it will slowly just get rid of all the CO2 if you do it multiple times. But because we're going to be carbonating these, because they started off carbonated and these are blush wines, so they're usually carbonated at the same time, we don't need to degas them. Oh yes. So we're going to carbonate these with sugar. Just a bit of sugar. And these are 750 ml bottles. And uh, we're just using approximate figures. I'm going to be using half a teaspoon to carbonate these lightly to give you a nice fizz and effervescing on the tongue. Why not? It's blush wine. So basically, we're just going to go through, open up the cap, grab approximately half a teaspoon of sugar. So for those people that want to weigh that out, that is uh, about two grams, because a teaspoon is four grams, and uh, in it goes, like so. Stick the lid on and dissolve the sugar in there, because, well, the yeast needs to be able to get to it. There we go, there's a lot of pressure in there. Put the lid on properly, and yeah. So I'm just gonna go through and carbonate all of these bottles, and I'll be right back. So now the moment you've probably not been waiting for, or have been, depending if you're a sadist or not, which is, how does it taste? Because, well, it has got sweetener in it, so, we know that using sweetener can make things drinkable sooner and, uh, well, I have low expectations and I'm expecting this to taste like a dog. A wet one with mange. So, um, yeah. It does, it actually doesn't smell bad. It smells better than the original before we brewed it. So, uh, cheers. That's not too bad. That's not too bad at all. Um, it does have a bit of a sweetener taste to it. Just, just a little bit. Um, that is a bit of a downside, but it has hints of wine, hints of berries. I don't know either. Just, just go with it. Got a little bit of carbonation because we didn't degas it, but in all honesty, I think that is going towards adding to the flavor of this. It's not a dry wine. It doesn't taste dry, uh, even though it was technically in the dry range, but that's the sweetener. And uh, that is not bad. Considering I had really low expectations of how this is gonna taste, this is not that bad. It tastes better than the original. And we brewed it, which is nice. Now that sweetener taste, we could kind of, yeah. Something tells me we're gonna have to come back and do this again. But this time, make this like 11, 12%, which would really help counteract that sweetener. The higher alcohol will give it that bit of harshness that you would expect from an actual wine to make it taste a bit more like a rosé. But it has berry notes. Uh, yeah, it, it does. It has berry notes. It tastes like a blush wine. I mean, it tastes like a low, uh, a low alcohol blush wine. A bit like, um, I'm guessing, 
like a cheap Blossom Hill wine. Some people like it, you know, it's okay. But um, yeah, really surprised that this doesn't taste like utter trash. Actually very happy as well, because I have six bottles of it. Um, yeah, so it turns out you can brew Schler. Probably going to have to do a bit of tweaking to it, and we'll come back in a couple of weeks once this is all carbonated and chilled, and try it again just to make sure. Hopefully with a little bit of aging, because uh, it does need a little bit. Ooh, this could be really, really tasty. I'm as shocked as you guys. Turns out, Schler wine is better brewed than it is bought from a bottle. I've learned something new. So on that note, I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Don't forget to check out some of the other ones and, well, subscribe if you like it. And uh, comment below some interesting things because, you know, maybe I'll do some. You never know. All right. Catch you later, guys. Um, cheers. Blush wine. Very fancy.